Yeah. Uh, I think the bottom line. was once that way as well. Yeah. And, and I think to a degree, it, it's still that way. Maybe modified a little yeah. bit, but uh, yeah. Yeah. still that yeah. way. Yeah. 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 All right, look into question five. What does Christ say he knows about this church? And the author says she sees six things in verse 19 and wants us to write them down there. What does Christ know about this church? Your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, your perseverance, deeds of labor are greater than the church. What what's what is the deeds? I mean, what? And we look at a church today. We look at a Christian today. What what are the deeds that we? Ministry, outreach, programs, helping your neighbor, evangelism, discipleship. I think actions are a lot better than words. Mm -hmm. Because I think people watch how you act instead of what you say. And that's where I live. I see that all the time. They stand and watch what, how you act before they say. You know, I think I'm in trouble then if more people watch <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I just said an extra prayer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Question six says, what strikes you about this list? Would you like to go to this church? All those attributes sound like a good church. Yeah. Yeah, if it stopped there. Yeah, if it stopped there, that's <laughs> The, yeah, this cheer, church appears to have it all together. You know, they're they're doing many of the right things, but but maybe that's inside, but outside is whole big story. Yeah, that's it. But the change is there. And and we can and as we look at the church and we kind of compare it to our own church, we we got to compare it to our own lives as well. Um, take it down to that next level, level, that more personal level. Question seven says, now we come to that bothersome word, but. <laughs> so, there. the good church goes on. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, it fell through the there were three groups of Christians in the church at Thyatira. Can you identify these groups from these verses? Jezebel, the people being seduced by her, and the people mm -hmm. holding to the gospel. Yep. Yeah, the faithful, strong Christians, which is talked about in verse 24. Uh, the author, I, I'm like you, I, I really saw two groups here, but she broke it into three. She said the the uh, toleration party, which was a group of people who tolerated all kinds of sin, but she separated them from the Jezebel party, which were the, the ones that followed Jezebel. But uh, her doctrines and, and that toleration of sin was all kind of intertwined there, but... All right, in question eight, what was Christ's accusation of this church? Verse 20 is where we find the answer. What did he have against them? It's all right. Yep. Yep. Louder to teach in the church, practice their lewd and sinful ways, teach others, convince others to do it. Jezebel. Question nine. Look up information about the woman. She was a harlot. <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up. <laughs> a woman of the night. I think they call that lady in the night. <laughs> 
who is very famous. Yes. I think you think all right. the time with us, as I grow up, you hear people say, well, that Jezebel. Or, you yes. Know, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, she had all kinds of prophets of God killed and everything, so that she endorsed her prophets of Baal, and she was just a, she was something else. Yeah. That was the original Jezebel in the Old uh-huh. Testament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This one, I mean, she was apparently influential in the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably a female member of the church. And even some of the stuff that I read, it was speculation that said that she could have been the wife of the pastor. So, I don't know. Did, uh, that was just speculation. Yeah. Didn't she try to persuade the Jewish leaders to go straight or something? I read somewhere about the Jewish leaders. Making destructive heresies and... Leading uh, <laughs> any to more corruptions. In question 10, it has us to look at 1 Kings uh, chapter 16 through 21. We won't read all those tonight. Hopefully, you had a chance to, to skim through those. What were some of the characteristics of this historical woman named Jezebel and, and why you think Christ gave this woman her name? Plum evil. She tried to destroy God's people. Plum evil. That's what this one did. She was married to King Ahab, which was considered one of the worst kings. Uh, Israel ever had. She committed worship of Baal. Uh, she had Naboth kill for his vineyard and had prophets killed and tried to even kill Elijah. But her end was she was thrown from a window, trampled by horses, and eaten by dogs. Yeah, she had a very uh, spectacular death. Mm-hmm. Anybody have anything else they'd like to add to that? I will say when a Jezebel spirit gets in the church, it's a hard one to deal with. Yeah. And it can come into the church, sneak right in, and you're not going to it. Just like it did there. Mm-hmm. She called herself uh, a prophetess. And uh, if she'd lived in Ephesus, she would have uh, thrown her out of church. But here in Thyatira, she gained quite a good-sized following. What were uh, her teachings, and why was this so bad? A couple things in particular she was... She was a goddess, performed sexual immorality in the church, being dedicated to the eyes. Yeah. That's a bit, well, down here in the, the study Bible, it also says something about uh, introduce members to of the church to sat- satanic rituals and practices. Yeah, there's not much evil you couldn't pin on this woman. She was... Uh, she was a true Jezebel. What does Christ say about what he has done to bring this woman back to himself and to the truth of God's word? And, and what was her response? She refused. In verse 22 and 23 are the harshest words Christ utters in judgment against any of the seven churches. What does Christ say he will do if the woman Jezebel and her followers do not repent of their sin? Does Jezebel want a bed of sickness and kill her followers with pestilence? 
and her children. Well, the, well, her children. Well, the, the children are the churches. Yeah. Is what they consider the churches. Yeah. Often, Christ disciplined his people in his church, and he doesn't let these kind of things go unnoticed because uh, it does great harm to the testimony of the church and to him. For further study on the discipline in a church and of Christ, uh, I don't know if this was in your book or not, but there's three or four, four or five references here. First Corinthians 5, 1 through 5. Is that in your book? No. Uh, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Romans 16, verse 17. And two more. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 8. And Hebrews 12, verses 4 through 11. Now you told us a couple. Yeah. What was that I, I can't see real good. <laughs> he, Hebrews 12, 4 through 11. What was the very first one? The uh, very first one was 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5. And these are all texts that uh, describe uh, the discipline necessary in the church and of Christ. For when the people in the church don't respond. give you a moment there if if, if, there's, if you want to take one of those, if any of you want to share it, we'll wait just a minute or two. To share these that you just told us? Yes. Seventeen says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who fall to visions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn, and avoid them. Matthew 18, verses 15, 16, 17. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And verse 17 says, And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a public. Corinthians 5, 1 through 5 indicates it is actually reported that there is immorality among you and immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles. If someone has his father's wife, you have become arrogant and have not mourned instead, so that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. For I am on my part, though absent in body, the present in spirit, have already judged him who has so committed this, as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled, and I with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, I have decided to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. Sufficient for such a one is this punishment which was inflicted by the majority, 
so that on the contrary you should rather forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, such a one might be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. Roman, Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching you learn, and turn away from them. So in these four or five passages we read, what's it, what's it telling us about discipline within the church, or without dissension, or about corrupt doctrine in the church? You need to take care of it. You need to take care of it. We, we must hold one another accountable. We must hold church leadership accountable. Because if we don't, he's going to. Mm-hmm. And we and if we don't and if we don't address any issues like that, it's the, the testimony that we're the false testimony that we're given to the world about not only the church but about God Himself. Anybody have anything to like share about that? All right, question 14. What will all the churches know or learn as a result of what Christ will do to this woman and her groupies? I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one according to their deeds. Yep. Thank you. I think it's interesting. She says the woman and her groupies. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's almost... Maybe she was a 70s woman or something. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, question 15. I don't think group piece is necessarily a biblical term. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I know. Uh, you know. From a, from a I know. culture, maybe. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think this one was a biblical one. Groupies. <laughs> I want some groupies. <laughs> we don't know if this woman was a Christian or not, and I don't know why she threw it in there. Christ was going to judge her and her followers quite harshly, even to death. Look up these verses and write down what you learned about the judgment Christ preserves for himself as head of the church to Christians who disobey him. I don't understand why she said that, too, because... Truly, she was against God's people and mm-hmm. false doctrines and everything. I mean, and yeah. I understand how much more unchristian can you be? <laughs> is what we're looking at. Right. Maybe she just didn't want to judge. I, I can understand. Mm-hmm. Maybe we shouldn't speak judgment over. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but still, <laughs> she's pretty extreme. Well, you think so. <laughs> <laughs> trees known by its fruit. <laughs> <laughs> what fruit you produce shows what's in your heart. <clears throat> but I, but I I agree with you there. But I also but I look at it from the other side, yeah. and I and I know that there's there's some very good fruit that's being produced that looks like good fruit that the motive behind it, you know, is sour. But. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it's hard. We can't judge someone's heart, but we we can judge their actions and their words and, and what they do. Anybody have anything they want to add to that? I think we've said enough. <laughs> we, we, we said we saw enough. <laughs> yeah, really. Good enough. Question 16, Christ will judge false teachers. Some of them pretend to be Christians and are not. They can mimic or talk at our deeds, yet they are teaching false doctrines. Look up these verses and write down what you learn about false teachers and their judgment. And if, if you look these up, and I'm sure you have, I, I think you, you find the, the same underlying theme through, throughout all of them. Um, what did you find? What 
in these these verses. Second Peter two one says, "But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord, who brought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction." I think in First John two eighteen and nineteen it says, "If you love the world, you are not a part of God." Mm-hmm. And Jude, the whole book, <laughs> sums up <clears throat> false teachers will try to infiltrate the church and lead people away from God, and God will execute judgment on them. Yeah, it says, it, it, it says false teachers turns God's grace into the right to sin. And that's a lot. I remember studying that in Ephesians, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where uh, they they felt that it was okay to sin because God was a forgiving God, and He would forgive you for everything. So you could sin every day, be the same thing every day, which is fine. Of course, you know another religion that's like that in this day. Well, we 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 see it in the world in, yeah. in a lot yeah. of cases as well. It's Society loves to look at the love part mm-hmm. and stop there. Well, that's, that's why there's so much tolerance. Compromise. Compromise yeah. and everything. Just what's being addressed in these letters. Yeah, in these letters. Question 17. What did Christ call the teachings of this woman? Why do you think he used this terminology and what does he mean by it? Deep things of Satan. Because mm-hmm. it was all evil. Yep. Yeah, the KJV calls it the depths of Satan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing lower than the depths of Satan, is there? I mean, it's the worst of sinful behavior mm-hmm. there is. Yeah. Especially if you're carrying out in a church mm-hmm. and leading other people astray. I can't think of. That's why I think. I, I would not turn her a Christian just because of her example because we are one not to lead people astray with our teachings. So, it's the worst of the worst of the worst. <laughs> uh, she gives a reference here of 1 Corinthians 2 10 through 12. Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely freely uh, to us from God, by God. Then in the book it says, false teachers then and now push our freedom in Christ to extremes using grace as a license for sin. That's what you just said, wasn't it, Vicki? Anybody have anything to add to 17 or anything we've talked about up to this point? Well, I think looking at where they talk about causing church splits, if you've ever experienced that, where a church is split, um, I mean, I've been through a divorce, and I don't know that I was as affected. I know I was sadder, but I wasn't as shaken to my core belief mm-hmm. as a split in the church. And because you worry, you worry about those who stay, you worry about those who go, you worry about am I following the right thing, you're praying about it all the time. 
and you're seeing your friends, you know, maybe go a different direction than you do, and it's very difficult. It, it's like a child of divorce. You don't know where to go. You, you don't have a safe place. It's either one place or the other, and you know, you just want everybody to get along and get back together, and, and it does not happen. So anybody that has experienced that, um, you know, it's to me, somebody that can split apart an entire congregation, that's pretty rough. I've been through two uh, splits in Florida mm -hmm. and felt the spirit leave the church. And it's like, okay, it's time to walk out. And I did. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's, it's difficult. I mean, it really is. Yes. Yeah. Back at my home church in Mass, they had a uh, a group of people mm -hmm. that moved to, left the church. <clears throat> but now, my opinion, the reason they left, mm -hmm. they were better to be gone than to be there because I just put it plain, plain and simple. They didn't like black people, and if black people came to the church, they didn't want to be there. So, well, I mean, they that. needed to be going out anyway. We had that in our church, and I think that was one of the reasons because yeah. there was a lot of other issues going on with the music minister. I won't go into detail. Uh, but that tore the part. People stopped tithing, and it just brought it down. It was very sad, really. <laughs> Well, years ago, it's probably been 20 or 30 years ago, somebody made a comment, and it was true, that the most segregated day of the week in the United States of America Sunday. is Sunday. Mm -hmm. And what a crime shame <laughs> that is. What a crime shame that is. Uh, you know, because, I don't know, I don't know, it, it's... You know, there, there's there are people who sit in church in a church pew every Sunday, but God knows their heart. Apparently, their heart's not in the right place. That's the good tolerance that she was talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. That you yeah. tolerate people, no matter what their skin color is, what they're wearing, yeah. their hairstyle, any of that. Yeah. That's the good tolerance. That's the tolerance Jesus teaches. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The tolerating evil. It's not. Well, I've been to a couple of black churches, and I had a, I mean, the spirit was there, and the time I left, I felt like I was black. I mean, <laughs> I mean just enjoyed it. There was no division or nothing. There was black and white there, and, you know, I was used to be in church out at noon, and, and you know, it gets 1 o'clock and one thirty, and they're just still praising Jesus, and then they said, let's go get something to eat, and let's get back here for tonight service. And it was just, it was just an awesome time. And but there is a lot of churches that are very, you know. I know when we pastored Rock Row, we had a black gentleman that came out there, and there was a few people that were very uncomfortable with that. But you know, we don't. I don't look at skin color. No. We all bleed the same, as the song goes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think with. Uh, division in the church, splits in the church, it, it basically can come down to, to three, three things. When it happens, it can be a pruning, where the church itself is pruned of maybe some things it needs to be pruned of. Mm -hmm. There's also times where the, the church just needs repotted, and the both sides can be repotted and both flourish in the spirit. And then there's also a case where the plant dies, the, where the vine well, dies, funny, and it's the, just... The ones I experienced, they didn't want to come to the church that I went to, but after I left and everything, they sold that church to the black people, which is fine, and they moved everybody to that church, and those were the ones that split. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it worked out, I guess. <laughs> I can worship anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't worship. They worship my God. But, but I'm right there with him. Has, has that church flourish since it built up under those false pretenses because 
if there was prejudice in, to cause the split in that church, yeah. that prejudice is still going to be there. It, it, but I've seen it on, it, it's Power Drive Baptist down there in Orlando. Uh, when I've seen it before, it didn't look like they were flourishing as mm -hmm. far as I could see. But Beulah Baptist Church, where I was from, mm -hmm. that's flourishing. Mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. This next question, question eighteen. I don't know if you all. You know that question didn't make any it, sense. It was a me it was a mess. It was yeah. like three questions together, and none of them made, none any, of them sense. made any sense. None of them made any sense at all. It says you might think that Christ would be terse and rather short with those Christians within the church who did not go along with this false teaching. That makes that no sense. That makes no sense at all. But no, he is generous and warm in his commendation of the believers there. Unless, do you think maybe she's saying that because they tolerated the false teachings within the church? I don't. I don't have. I'm not sure. I'm but, not sure that this, this question. I, I just didn't. I, I thought the whole question was a mess. About. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll I'll have put it for an answer because yeah. I put. I do not lay uh, on you any other burden. Hold fast mm -hmm. to what you have until yes. I come. Yeah. That's what I put as yeah. yeah. <laughs> After all that, you, just, yeah. you almost had to ignore the question to answer it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I, I But that, I that is his counsel to them, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had to read that three different times. I thought, well, I'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Question 19, he, he is saying the same thing to us. Hang on, refuse evil, persevere and stay true to me. What are some other verses in the Bible that tell us the same thing that comes to your mind? Write them down here. And you all are good at this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so let me have them. Isaiah 41, 10. My favorite verse. Spirit out front with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you, and I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Just hang on. And don't fear. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. And I always think of John 10.10. 10. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give life and enjoy to the fullest. What is that, too? In abundance to the fullest till it overflows. Anybody else have something they want to share? Second Peter 2 9. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue God's people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. And I can do all things to trust these judgments with me. Don't know what the first one is. <laughs> First Corinthians five thirteen, God judges those outside, purge the evil person from among you. Anyone else? Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. And there's Revelations 3, 10. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Thank you. I think I think all of them are, are good examples, and those are just the, the tip of the iceberg. There's many more. Question 20 says, What reward does Christ offer to the overcomers in Thyatira and all the way down through the ages to, to all believers in Him? Authority over the nations and the morning star, which is Jesus. Absolutely. What Old Testament verses does Christ quote in his promise to overcomers? Yep. Psalms 2, 8, and 9. Mm -hmm. And 
been in Isaiah 30, 14. That says you will be smashed like a piece of pottery shattered so completely that there won't be a piece big enough to carry coals from a fireplace or a little water from the well. 30, Question 22. What does it mean that we will reign with Christ in his kingdom? And this is getting close to that debate <laughs> that we've had in the past a couple of times. But... Uh, it's just kind of skirting it tonight, but uh, <laughs> what does it mean that we will reign with Christ in His kingdom? Well, we'll get to see His face, His name will be on our foreheads, and we will reign forever. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. And what does it mean that we're going to reign with Christ? This Man, one's says for you. we'll reign as kings over the new earth. And there again, who you reigning over? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going back to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait till we get to there. <laughs> Pack a lunch. That, <laughs> Revelation 22, pack a lunch. Because uh, I have a feeling Tom's going <laughs> to... He's going to take his slate into the evening. <laughs> Question 23 says, Who is the morning star? And Tom answered that a, a moment ago. Jesus. Christ but himself. you know, I, I read, when I was researching it, I mean, I put down Jesus, but I also read that in the King James Version, the King James Version, and in the New King James Version, they refer to the morning star also as Lucifer, falling from the sky in the morning. Hmm. That's what it says when I researched it. So it said... Well, thank you for giving me some homework. <laughs> I couldn't let you all have seen it. <laughs> no. So, you know, that's what I found when I was researching it today. Okay. All right, question 24 is, in all the letters, how does Christ end this one? In verse 29. He who has an ear, let him hear. What goes along with hearing what he has to say? We gotta listen. We gotta understand it. What he is saying, and we gotta obey it. Mm -hmm. We gotta obey it. Yep. All right. The last three questions kind of get more personal. Do you see similarities between the problems in this church and your own church? And if so, what are they? Not so much in this one, but I see. But I, I hadn't been around it that long. But uh, like I said, I did see it in other churches. Not to that degree, but I mean, I've seen, been to churches where, like I said before, they're not preaching everything that says in the Bible. They run off track. So to me, they leading people astray, where it's the Jezebel or no Jezebel, they still leading people astray. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Her phone ringing. <laughs> Her phone ringing. <laughs> That's my text message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> If you all learned anything tonight, you know we're supposed to discipline, but it was one on one first. So somebody, somebody walk her to her car this evening. It's very important that she gets her text messages. Go, going to what you were saying, Tom, though, I think. Before, I, I 
think uh, I, I think any church that feels like that threat isn't there is there not now. That that overconfidence is dangerous as well because we we've, we've always got to be on our our toes. Yeah. I think each church feels a little. Uh, I don't think there's any church that's free of... Yeah, that's what I said. So I haven't been around long enough to, <laughs> to know all the ancient yeah. churches. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a church that's, that's following God's Word, I think Satan's going to be banging yeah. on the door all the time. And that, that threat is, is always there. Yeah. I, I think, too, that there have been... Well, and, and I'm not talking, speaking of necessarily now, but it's an ongoing thing. And it's not directed at one person. But when we do a ministry, people like to know numbers. Um, Lynn's the master of it over there with the OCC, you know, shoe boxes and things like that. They want to know, you know, how many shoe boxes, how much, how much, that much. And that's great. And I know it's encouraging to know at least generally where your box is going to go or, or whatever. And it's not just OCC. It's been about local things here, local ministries. And the fact is that we need to meet the needs. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We don't necessarily, we're not producing widgets at a factory. So we can't count and say exactly how many people you know, were saved, exactly how many people received whatever. Um, you know, did we get credit? Are they going to join our church? People, well-intentioned people, will ask those questions. And what they're not understanding is the big picture is we plant the seeds and somebody else may reap them. Okay? Like, and we may have people walking off the street that somebody else has sown the seed and said, you know, you need to get a good church congregation find you a Bible-believing church and they come in. And they join. And so I think sometimes that, you know, those little little things, they are honest questions, but it takes our focus off of what our focus should be on, which is serving others because Christ shed blood for us, because God is so merciful to us that we should be urgently telling others, hey. He bailed me out of this. He can bail you out of your problem, too. And whether you decide to come to Western First Baptist Church or whether you go someplace else, it's okay. So I I think that sometimes those things are that we have to monitor how we ask things. And I know reports are necessary. We have a business meeting too often, I'm sorry. But the fact, I'm just going to throw it out there quarterly. We get it all done. But we have too many people that want it every month. And I understand that. And I understand the reason. So I'm not going to fuss. But the fact is that sometimes we get bogged down in minutia. And we need to step back and take deep breaths and get in the Word, and pray about it, and then go on with whatever ministry God's calling them to do. That's, that's, that's my soapbox. That's my soapbox. That's my. Thank you for thank you for coming to my tent. <laughs> <laughs> because because they, you know because people do want to know those things about well how much money was raised well how much this how much how much did we send to missionary stuff that's that's fine but that should not be our focus. That should not be our focus. Yeah. You know they don't say how many did you have at Bible study. What all went on at Bible study? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. come out and see. <laughs> come out and join us. You might even get a laugh. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there, doll. All right, let me get these last two in. <laughs> I've got I got five minutes yeah. by my own personal. You're talking about numbers, and here I am. We got. Five minutes. <laughs> He's like, you no more. <laughs> how, how can we guard against false teachers in our churches? Kick them out. <laughs> Get in the word. Get in the word. No God's word is the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If they try to teach you something that's not in the Bible, you, you, you don't know what's in the Bible. Don't be afraid to question. Yeah. 
I think too and many of us sit on our hands and go, oh, they, they speak well. They must know what they're talking about. Yeah. And make sure they are teaching out of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever they're teaching out of. <laughs> And I think besides having our nose in the Bible, we need to have our heads bowed a lot too. Prayer is it. And uh, the last question, what, what are some things you need to repent of and change in your life that may be hindering the work of Christ in your life and in your testimony to others? My text message. Change my ringtone. And, 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 and this, is, this is kind of a prelude question to the next two weeks sermons, as a matter of fact. But speaking of testimony, but after listing whatever the Spirit lays on your heart, write a prayer confession and praise to him who knows all things and who loves us so much so that's that's something you can take with you tonight bring back sunday we're going to talk about it and the following sunday we're going to talk about it but uh, anyhow anybody have anything to add other than doors i'm sorry <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Go on once. Well, thank you for participating tonight. Uh, it's important that you all do participate like you do. I think that's what makes this such a good study. And hopefully you are continuing to gain something from this each week. All right. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we, we thank you for this time together, Lord, and I just thank you for your guidance, and, and I just pray, Lord, that all things uh, done tonight, all things said, uh, would honor and glorify you. Grow us spiritually with uh, your word and with prayer, and Father, just go with us as we leave tonight, and Father, until we return again to your house, Father, I just pray your blessings upon each one, and these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.